Today, I'm laying out a set of specific proposals to finish what we started this summer. Proposals that live up to the principles I've talked about from the beginning. It's a plan that reduces our debt by more than $4 trillion and achieves these savings in a way that is fair by asking everybody to do their part so that no one has to bear too much of the burden on their own. All told, this plan cuts $2 in spending for every dollar in new revenues. In addition to the $1 trillion in spending that we've already cut from the budget, our plan makes additional spending cuts that need to happen if we're to solve this problem. We reform agricultural subsidies, subsidies that a lot of times pay large farms for crops that they don't grow. We make modest adjustments to federal retirement programs. We reduce by tens of billions of dollars the tax money that goes to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. We also, also ask the largest financial firms, companies saved by tax dollars during the financial crisis, to repay the American people for every dime that we spent. And we save an additional $1 trillion as we end the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. These savings are not only counted as part of our plan, but as part of the budget plan that nearly every Republican on the House uh, voted for. Finally, this plan includes structural reforms to reduce the cost of health care in programs like Medicare and Medicaid. Keep in mind, we've already included a number of reforms in the health care law, which will go a long way towards controlling these costs, but we're going to have to do a little more. This plan reduces wasteful subsidies and erroneous payments while changing some incentives that often lead to excessive health care costs. It makes prescriptions more affordable through faster approval of generic drugs. We'll work with governors to make Medicaid more efficient and more accountable, and we'll change the way we pay for health care. Instead of just paying for procedures, providers will be paid more when they improve results, and such steps will save money and improve care. These changes are phased in slowly to strengthen Medicare and Medicaid over time. Because while we do need to reduce health care costs, I'm not going to allow that to be an excuse for turning Medicare into a voucher program that leaves seniors at the mercy of the insurance industry. And I'm not going to stand for balancing the budget by denying or reducing health care for poor children or those with disabilities. So we will reform Medicare and Medicaid, but we will not abandon the fundamental commitment that this country has kept for generations. And by the way, that includes our commitment to Social Security. I've said before, Social Security is not the primary cause of our deficits, but it does face long-term challenges as our country grows older, and both parties are going to need to work together on a separate track to strengthen Social Security for our children and our grandchildren. So this is how we can reduce spending by scouring the budget for every dime of waste and inefficiency, by reforming government spending, and by making modest adjustments to Medicare and Medicaid. But all these reductions in spending by themselves will not solve our fiscal problems. We can't just cut our way out of this hole. It's going to take a balanced approach. If we're going to make spending cuts, many of which we wouldn't make if we weren't facing such large budget deficits, then it's only right that we ask everyone to pay their fair share. 